Hi, everyone. This is Jackie Cooper with J. Cooper Travels, Crypto Mom 2, and Love Travel Scotland. I want to welcome everyone back to our talk shows. I also want to um, thank everyone for liking and subscribing. I have some wonderful conversations, including the one today that I will be dropping shortly. And I want to make sure that you're all in the loop so that way you can stay current both about events, places to go, and activities to take part in. So today I have a very special guest, Meredith Stein, and she is um, uh, an author, but she's more than that. She She's a, um, a visionary and very knowledgeable about multiple topics. So we're going to be um, talking about her book, but we're going to be kind of chatting a few different things. And I'm going to have her introduce herself in a quick second. Before I do that, for those that are new to my talk shows, I want to welcome you. My background is that I'm an attorney. I'm also an educator in the special education field. And I'm also uh, an author as well, as well as a blockchain enthusiast and um, a traveler and so many other things. I have gotten involved with a lot of different uh, projects because of my personal interests. And one of the things that I have found is that this is a very small global community. And the more that I network with people and talk to people, I find that we all have common interests, but we can all share and learn from each other. And I've learned a lot by just talking with Meredith. So I'm very excited to have her on the show so she can also help you and your understanding of cloud governance and a lot of other technical terms and things that, you know, again, I had no clue until I started speaking to her. So Meredith, how are you doing today? Well, Jackie, thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be here. I, I love being mutual fans of, of smart women. So uh, your, your work and resources have certainly helped me raise my awareness about crypto. And I'm, I'm just wonderful to be here to chat with you today. Yeah, I know that you're a certified public accountant, and you also are an executive with over 20 years of experience. Um, Your career has kind of gone over a variety of areas from governance to risk and compliance. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit more about how you got involved with all this? Because I I don't often find um, women involved in these areas. So I was very excited to be chatting with you. So why don't you uh, share a little bit more about how you kind of dived into this? Sure. And and yes, women in tech is such an important way for us to be part of that industry. And, um, you know, you and I have both gone on our own journeys, becoming authors and I was uh, somehow the the stars are aligned that we got published. My co-authors and I um, are work we're working with Degruder Publishing, which is um, a fairly established. I think it was established in 1749, and Degruder is an international academic publisher. And so the the audience for our book there's there's a, a wide audience for the book, but it started off with thinking that we were writing the book for boards of directors. And my um, my background in audit and governance have always sort of had that lens of from an oversight perspective, what should leaders be thinking about in the way of risk and compliance. And so uh, I got connected with my co-author, Dr. Stephen Mezio, who is a professor, uh, a clinical professor at Pace University and an executive director for their sustainability um, school. And he and I started writing an article on the topic of cloud in 2020 before the COVID lockdown. And we got published that summer. And Steve had the great idea to say, hey, let's let's write a book about this. Each chapter can sort of be uh, its own set, like an old standalone article. And it, the the excitement just grew from there and uh, we were able to get connected with a publisher and now our book is published on on Amazon and by Degruder Publishing, uh, available for purchase at any time. Really excited about it and, and you know, when I think about the professors, it's called Professors of Practice series and it's the first in this series by Degruder Publishing, the idea sort of get it it was I was so happy to be introduced to you because um our mutual friend Stacey Linderman of A6 business and uh, operational organization she introduced me to you and 
you know, she she explained what a wonderful person you are and how you are a lifelong learner, and Stacy is as well. The the idea that you were you're trying to help raise literacy and raise awareness about crypto, similar concept here is that my authors and I are trying to raise awareness about the importance of cloud governance, and you know, certainly discussing some powerful topics. Uh, when I just tie it together with the crypto piece, I think, um, you know, blockchains become synonymous with cryptocurrencies. And I think the cloud can push the execution of some blockchain technologies. And there's also blockchain cloud storage solutions and ways that the, the, cl um, the cloud breaks up the data, encrypts it. Uh, adding that extra layer of security and then distributes it through a network. So I think some, you know, some people I've heard say that blockchain's a new and possibly cheaper way to perform cloud storage. Well, we'll get back to some of these, uh, some of the risks that we discuss in the book. But uh, the the real uh, the way you know you and I got connected, I think that the tie-in is that we both want to raise literacy in, in different topics. So that's the goal, certainly. Uh, but we bring, um, my co-authors and I each bring some vertical skills and perspectives with industry specializations. I'm in healthcare. Um, Steve is, he has some deep governance insights as well as organizational change, human capital, learning. And our co-author, uh, Vince, he, he brought some deep, cloud technical skills and experience to the table. So I love everything that you're saying. For those that are on the visual side, you're going to see that I've hopped over to Amazon. So that way you can uh, find the cloud governance book and just, you know, put in the title name and either Meredith Stein's name or Stephen Mezio's name and the book will come up. For those that are on the audio side, I will also be giving the link within my blog. So that way you know, again, don't worry if you don't have paper and pen, I'll definitely make sure that you have access to, um, you know, the link. So you've mentioned a lot of things, which are just great. I know that um, there might be some newbies here. So explain what cloud governance means, um, you know, in the maybe the simplest of terms, um, and then we'll build on it because there's a lot of use cases. But, you know, just like, um, and thank you for mentioning that, you know, about the fact that I'm also an author of the Bitcoin Cinderella. And the reason why I wrote that book is there's always vocabulary and in any field. And it gets very confusing when you hear terms and you just don't know where to go to kind of break it out. So in your in your area, um, you know, cloud governance and working with corporations and individuals who have a need to know they might know, but if someone's new, what would that, what does that actually mean or look like? You are hundred percent on board. The, and the book, it's the basics book. It's a reference guide. And it has just like you said, definitions and explanations of complex jargon, because just like, like crypto, uh, the cloud governance is a complicated topic. And some people, uh, you know, could become fearful about what they think could be complex, but it's just clouded with, Clouded with some uh, some jargon. So the um, the we spent a substantial amount of time researching and discussing how to best define cloud governance. And you know the terms are independent of each other, and they're each in their own complex domain. So the cloud and then corporate governance. And we were trying to help the reader understand the impact of the cloud on many governance functions. And when I say Governance functions, I'm talking about the boards of directors, internal audit, cybersecurity, incident response, uh, risk assessment, third party assurance. So we present a, a compilation of cloud governance definitions and we landed on one for the foundation of the book. And uh, it's, a, it's another woman in technology, uh, Dr. Uh, Theracium is, uh, she works at the University of Texas at Dallas and we landed on her definition, uh, a role model in cybersecurity and helping minority women gain some insights and, and opportunities in the cyberspace. So we landed on her definition as the foundation for the book and it anchored on two parts that are important. The first is the it's IT related 
And the second part is business focus. And I would say that this is more, if I was to say like, who's the audience for the book, it would land more on the business side than the technology side. And we we have some really great questions at the end of each chapter that would appeal to management, to corporations, small to medium-sized businesses, boards of directors, consultants, auditors, students, faculty, uh, consultants would also be a big one. Um, and so the, the IT part of the definition of cloud governance talks about accountability and decision-making. And it's about bringing value, you know, a balance between value, risk, and resources. The business part is focused on the investment and control of the cloud. So it, it, the definition itself uh, informs the creation of our cloud governance business process ecosystem. And I think you that seems to be the buzzword for 20, the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. So in the book, we, we put together um, a, an ecosystem to help, you know, break down some of those complex topics, domains, and, and that jargon that you spoke of. So um, wh- why would a company or an individual, because companies are made up of individuals, why would an individual need to know some of the questions that you, or and the answers that you're raising in the book? What, what are the uh, concerns that they, um, might be asking and they don't even realize that they need to reach out to you. Um, you know, what what kind of problem can you help solve? Yeah, so the cloud stresses an organization's governance in a, in a number of ways. And it ext- at first it extends the enterprise, right? The third party cloud service provider goes outside of the organization. And the cloud brings new opportunities for innovation, which you've seen. And at the same time, it, it exasperates existing risks and create some new risks. And we have in the book a cloud risk analysis that I think would be really a helpful resource to people. So to name a few cloud risks, you have some misconfigurations, uh, the big one on uh, failure to control some cloud expenses, a very limited amount of due diligence before starting a contract relationship with a cloud service provider, non-compliance with the many data privacy laws, not just within the United States, but abroad, uh, such as the European Union and the GDPR. And a big thing that we discovered was that lack of skills and experience to basically execute any sort of cloud strategy. So there's definitely some new skill sets that an organization would need in order to implement cloud computing at their organization. So I would say that in in the idea of that ecosystem that an organization has to adapt and if it doesn't, then it can't be resilient. So it's not just about you know, it's not just the OCIO taking care of the CIO office taking care of this particular issue, right? This is the, 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 you know, the idea of resilience for the entire organization. And in order to, you know, have that resilience, you have to think about risk and the proper governance in place. Well, what uh, there were a few things that came to mind while you were talking. We think about companies, websites, other ways that we might project our image online. And we 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 think of it in the the isolation part of it. And then we think of it, you know, from the customer perspective. But um, you know, you brought up the idea of just um the legality of communication across borders because again, anytime you put something on the internet for a co- corporation, you're and you are communicating into a different country, there are different rules and regulations that you need to be aware of. So that's definitely an area of um, challenge because how does everyone find out what they should do or should not do and stay in compliance? Because I know in in the blockchain side, at the very least, um, things are evolving and changing all the time. So in the traditional business side or the area that you're working with, how can you make sure that you're in compliance? How do you how do you help them? Yes, and, and we've we have a, a a very large chapter discussing just that the the security 
the the compliance because of the many rules and regulations and like you said there's even some emerging ones right that where the companies are trying to chase the regulation and make sure that if they're doing business and in one country that it's not make, they're making sure that they're compliant with all of the places that they do business and because of you know cloud service providers have their servers in different countries that that data is crossing organizational boundaries and country boundaries. So you absolutely have to be aware and ask management, you know, what are, are we thinking about this? Like what happens if data transfers and what happens if, you know, the, the disposition of the data, how are we making sure that it's disposed and destroyed of properly? Like I said, it, it, it exasperates some risks and creates some new ones. So, having the dialogue first would be the idea, right? Like making sure that people are aware. One of the, if I could call to action something for the listeners would be yeah. you know, asking asking the organization if they have, you know, a quote unquote inventory of all their cloud service providers and services. Most of the time an organization is unaware what, you know, services they have floating around in the cloud. And that means that they don't know where their data is. So I would say the first stop would be to, if you don't have an inventory of the cloud services and the providers that are providing those services, then you start making one because uh, you can't, you can't protect what you don't know. No, uh, you, you, while you were talking, I was thinking to myself, uh, there's a few different questions popped into my mind is not just where your cloud services are being held, but then the other question, and you might address it in the book, what happens if that cloud service provider, one, um, either goes out of, out of business, so what happens to your information, two, what happens if they get hacked, what happens to your business, and, you know, again, do you have a backup, and where and how is that backup there? So there was that whole line of thought that I, I want you to, you know, maybe hop on. But then the other thing I was thinking, just as a person, an individual, we also have, you know, various um, cloud providers that our personal information is on. And so if we are within a company structure and we're also doing personal activities, then that brings up a whole nother um line of questions, you know, in terms of protection for the company that I'm in. But if I'm doing personal emails out and whatever, that might open up another area of risk because all of a sudden it's like opening up a door that maybe wasn't protected before. So um, what answers do you have or how does the book address that? Or um, mm -hmm. can people contact you if they need consulting? You know, all, all that. <laughs> You so smart, Jackie. You raised some excellent points, and yes, there are th you know certain actions and repercussions if a, a a cloud service provider gets hacked. Or most of the time, when I talk when I first spoke about the the litany of risks that we explore, cloud miscompute configurations is the top risk. And you know what? That's not the cloud service provider's fault. That's the organization's fault. So, you know, the, the cloud service providers are responsible for making sure that the infrastructure and, you know, their servers are secure, but the organization is responsible for making sure their data is secure. And so, you know, there, there are, this is what, this is what happens with, you know, um, spiraling control, the cloud costs, Right. So you have maybe another consultant in addition to the cloud service provider helping to manage you know, your services. So they understand how to read you know, the cloud service provider incident reports or their the bills because the invoices are just as confusing like a cell phone bill. Uh, if you imagine having that for an entire company, there's a case that we examine in here with an organization that uh, went about, I think, $90 million over their cloud budget wow. in one year. And so clearly there were some cloud costs and, and financial governance functions that were lacking. Uh, and, you know, when we talk about the idea that what happens to an organization if their cloud data is, is breached, uh, we, we talk about that in the book as well. And what does that mean for the board of directors? 
Was the cloud discussed at board meetings? And was that breach discussed at a board meeting? And what, you know, the board members have a response, a fiduciary responsibility uh, to, to be careful with understanding the business of the organization. So did the organization take too long to discuss and disclose that, that significant cloud breach? Uh, what you know, we're seeing some uh, director and officer liability lawsuits come in and say, you know, stakeholders and, and um, people whose data were breached, say, like basically suing, having a lawsuit against the board of directors to say you were deficient in your duties in performing oversight of management and you let this breach happen. So there's there's a lot going on to unpack in, in that um, in the questions that you raised and organizations are still learning and it's hard to keep pace because you know the cyber threats are happening all the time. And yeah. again, it gets back to being able to have that inventory so you know what you're protecting. There was, was a big part of our book that talks about democratized employees. And that's the, I'm sure you're familiar with that term where it's those employees outside of the centralized IT function that are engaging in, in procuring their own for the good of the organization, but they're just going ahead and, and procuring it outside of the centralized IT function and that IT function doesn't understand that that exists. And what access does that cloud uh, activity have on the company's network? So exposing even more security risks. So I know that we're, you know, uh, the book might talk about traditional businesses, but while you were talking and, you know, about liability, board of directors, things like that, what popped into my mind from the blockchain world was the FTX situation that, you know, again, um, you know, everything that happened with FTX, you know, to me is, is not a surprise. It's a, a, only because it's, it has, it's, how do I say this? It's not a reflection on the blockchain world. It's a reflection yeah. on how, how businesses are handled and, or mishandled. And, um, you know, and it can happen in any business, whether it's a blockchain business or brick and mortar business. It could, and so, but I think that um, these are important questions that, you know, need to be asked and answered because you're right, there is liability when a discussion happens and then nothing gets done. Um, and, or when there's an awareness of things that might be happening and, you know, again, it's, uh, it's very complex. So I, I, I'm, you know, I'm grateful that you wrote the book, I'm sure it's going to raise more questions than maybe the answers exist. <laughs> there, there are, there are questions today, and maybe answers tomorrow, or maybe just more questions. You, you raised F FTX as an example, that had I don't believe anything to do with crypto. It was all about their lack of governance, lack of internal controls, and human behaviors went awry, and and there was greed. Yeah, it didn't have to do with anything with crypto. It was just poor governance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Moving funds from one to another, and um, not having the liquidity, and not having the controls in place, and you know, just a lot of things. So. Um, I know that um, people are going to want to reach out to you. What's the best way for them to reach out to you so that way um, they can ask questions of you and um, you can support them? Yes, you can connect with me on LinkedIn at Meredith Stein. Uh, and you know the what I love your listeners to remember is you definitely don't need to be a technology specialist in cloud or crypto blockchain what have you to understand that corp there's definitely some corporate governance implications on on cloud computing so uh research confirmed there's a lot of confusion you're not alone and we offer that these uh the, the book and the questions that we pose will will help uh hopefully raise your cloud literacy uh for the future I think everyone needs to be thinking about getting the book just because even if it's not something that you normally would read, um, it's important for us to step out of our comfort zone to understand the language because eventually 
we're going to be encountering the terms and we might have someone that's going to be asking us these questions and we might not be experts in this area. And myself, I'm talking about me. Um, Meredith obviously is, but again, it's the type of thing that you need to be able to share what resources that they can go to. So, um, you know, adding this book to your personal or business library is really important. And so I'm really glad that you wrote it. Are you thinking about writing a second book? I, I am. Steve Matthew <laughs> and I are partnering with another person. We're thinking about uh, writing another book about corporate governance. Uh, so again, trying to go a little bit level higher than you know the specific, the specific cloud governance. I know that you too are interested in writing a, an, another book, and it is it's an exciting journey. And uh, I wish you all the best, Jackie. This was wonderful. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I um, the the first book, the Bitcoin Cinderella, um, you know, is the foundation of the adventure series for Samantha, who's trying to find her mom in this. Um, blockchain adventure. The second book that I'm writing is called The Bitcoin Cinderella and the Seven Dwarves. And it's all about Bitcoin mining. And and that's where she meets her cousin, Snow White. So I'm using fairy tales to integrate the educational uh, terminology and also kind of use uh, that format to make it fun for everyone who's reading. But there'll, there'll be QR codes to educational platforms that will be online as well. So thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. So for everyone that is on, as I always say, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We're all so interconnected. We're all part of one world. And definitely, if you've been listening, I will have um, Meredith's um, contact information in the blog below, along with where you can get the book on Amazon. And I appreciate everyone being on. Thank you and have a great day. And thank you so much, Meredith, for being on. Thank you, Jackie. Take care. Thank you.